Hey guys, I got a video for you today that a lot of people have been asking about and I just never really sat down and done a good video on, so I'm going to do that today. How did I end up with our 63 and a half Ford Galaxy we call Legacy? How the name came about, how it ended up being a race car, the history of the car, all of that stuff, I'm going to tell you about it today. Nut job. <laughs> so it's a rainy day out there today. Uh, the weather's kind of rough. I'm working on building a set of heads here uh, for a friend and a customer. And uh, it just seemed like the perfect day to talk about how I ended up with the Galaxy and why and the story behind the Galaxy. So I guess to start out with how I ended up with it, uh, or why, uh, you have to back up just a little bit and go back to, uh, 2015. I had went, I think it was 2015. I had went and seen a, uh, Southeast Gassers race. It was the first time, uh, I had seen a Southeast Gassers race and, uh, I was kind of hooked. Uh, right away on it and I was going to build a gasser I I went out right after that I bought a body uh, it was actually a Mustang body I went and bought at that time went out and bought a body and we were going to build a gasser uh, I had talked to some people about what I needed to do and you know what needed to be done to it because I'd never built a gasser Got a lot of good information, but there was some negative people out there about me being involved in the Southeast Gassers at that time. Uh, not necessarily from the Southeast Gassers, but from other people. And they were basically hitting me with, uh, you know, guys like you don't have enough money to do that. You don't need to be in that. Just the negative stuff that you get into with, with that. Um, but I was determined I was going to do it. And honestly, the more negative people got about the fact that I couldn't afford to do it, I was, I was literally told you're too poor to be involved in heads up racing. Uh, the more people told me I couldn't do it, the more I was determined I was going to do it. So, uh, it ended up taking long enough that it was, a uh, Good luck on my part. It ended up taking long enough for me to scrounge up enough money to buy parts because it was one of those deals where you put $20 back here, $20 back there, you got enough money to go buy a part. So it ended up taking long enough that I want to say it was, I may be off on this. I want to say it was late 2016, maybe early 2017, that there started being some rumblings that they were going to start a super stock class in the Southeast Gassers. Now you're talking my language because that appealed to me a whole lot more than a gasser. The super stock cars were cars that every man owned. Uh, they were the ones that were everyday cars back in the day. So they appealed to me a lot, lot more. So that's where the story kind of begins. I, I was putting together a super stock car. We were going to join the Southeast Gassers, and we were going to run the super stock class. It was done. That's the way it was going to work. So I didn't actually start out with a Galaxy. Give me just a few more minutes to set this up. I didn't actually start out with a Galaxy. I actually started out with a, uh, a Ford Falcon. I don't even remember what year it was. I want to say it was like a 66, maybe. I can't actually remember what year it was, but I do have a picture of the car. Uh, and honestly, the reason I started with this car is I needed something to work with the Southeast Gassers. I needed something that was pre-67 
and I needed something that was a Ford because, well, I've kind of got Ford stuff laying around here everywhere. So to keep the budget in mind, it had to be a Ford. So I found this little Falcon, and the reason I went with it is simply because it was absolutely cheap. I picked the car up again for like 250 bucks, 300 bucks. I don't remember exactly. I brought it home. Everything that I wasn't going to use immediately got pulled off the car. And I sold the transmission for like 200 bucks. I sold the wheels for 150, 200 bucks, something like that. I sold the interior out of it, this, all that for like another 100 bucks or so. So uh, I was in this car. Not only was I in this car, no money. I was actually to the good in this car. Uh, I actually had the car in about $200 in my pocket. So I started assembling this, this Falcon. And I actually went through the process of painting it. Uh, it, was, it was a pretty, pretty decent deal. Uh, we went through and, and done all this. I, and I'll try to find as many pictures as I can of this. So here's where the Galaxy comes in. A buddy of mine reaches out to me and says, uh, you're not going to believe what I just found because he knew I was a fan of the Ford Galaxy. Uh, the, the earliest car I can remember riding in as a child was actually a 64, but he knew I was a fan of the Galaxy. So he reached out to me and said, there's a guy up the road has a Galaxy in his garage and he may be willing to sell it. All right, now you've got my interest peaked. So, got my interest peaked. There's a Galaxy out there sitting in somebody's garage, and they may want to sell it. So, now I'm all ears. I mean, I'm perked up here. I'm listening. So, the deal was that there's a guy right up the road from my house. Um, I mean, this is probably within two miles. That has a 63 and a half Ford Galaxy sitting in his garage up on blocks. Has not been touched since the late 80s. Just sitting there inside a garage. I I mean, it can't get any better than that. So, uh, I get the details. I immediately jump in the car. I actually jumped in the, the 68 wagon. Drove over to his house. Uh, and the reason we knew about it, when you pull up to his house... His garage was over on the side. You couldn't see in the garage. The reason we knew it was there is he had a newer truck that had some mechanical issues, and he had called the dealership to have them worked on. And the tow truck driver had come out to pick the truck up, was buddies with my buddy, and told him about it, and he told me about it. So that's how I knew it was there and in the house. So uh, I went over immediately, knocked on his door, I, we got to talk about this car. I need to know if I can buy this car. So I get up there, and this is where I meet Melvin. Melvin was the owner of this car. Uh, Melvin, man, the stories alone. But anyway, I'm I'm straying. I met Melvin, and I went in and looked at the car for the first time. I went in and seen the car. It was sitting up on blocks. The paint was faded off the fenders and. It had the patina, as the, as the kids say, it had the patina on it. Um, and there was a couple of dark spots on it where, you know, stuff had been laid on it over the years. But overall, it was there. It was complete. It was a full car. And I was, I was immediately in love. Uh, I, I knew I had to take this car home with me. It wasn't going to be that easy. Melvin, Melvin loved that car. Melvin ordered that car brand new in 1963 and ordered it the way he wanted it. The way he wanted it. He ordered everything about that car. And he had had that car its entire existence. Uh, the only owner. And he was, he was to the point, you know, Melvin was... 80 years old. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Melvin was around 80 years old ish then. And he was to the point where, or maybe late seventies, he was to the point where he knew 
he was not going to be able to get around to fixing it. That uh, in his case, he still had the mind to fix it, but his financial ability was not going to be there to fix it. Not that mine was either, but he he knew that he couldn't get the car back on the road or back on the track. And uh, at the same time, he was reluctant to get rid of it because he had had it longer than he'd had anything in his life. Now, Melvin ordered that car because he was in the military at the time, and he wanted to, he wanted a car that he could drive around on, his, his words, he wanted a car he could drive around on base and go out and race on the weekends at uh, tracks around the areas wherever he was stationed. Uh, that car has competed in some very good races, and that car did very good when it was new. So, uh, Melvin never had it lettered up or anything. That was all. That all came from me, and that was later. But um, he was kind of reluctant to sell it, so I didn't push the issue right there. Uh, I sat down and talked with him about racing. I sat down and talked to him about his history with the car and, and things of that nature. And me and Melvin got to be kind of friends uh, pretty quickly. That was early, early in 2018. Uh, I don't remember when, but it was early in 2018. Because uh, I actually carried that car uh, to Mooresville for the first, the first time I raced it. I believe it was September of 2018. I know it was 2018. I believe it was September. Uh, I have a video that I'll put in. The first time I got it up and running, and uh, uh, it'll say in that video, but I believe it was September. But this was early 2018 when I uh, I went and talked to Melvin the first time, and he just he wasn't ready to sell it. And we loosely talked about if I'd sell it, I'd have to have you know a certain number, but not really in the market to sell it right now because I, I want to fix the car up, what he was saying. This rolls on till during the summer of 2018. And I know that because we were at my in-law's house. Uh, we go up there every year. They actually live in Michigan now. And we go up there every year uh, and spend some time during the summer with them. And I got a phone call from Melvin while I was at my in-law's house. So Melvin calls me and tells me that, uh, or he actually calls me and says, so are you still interested in that old galaxy of mine? Yes, sir. I'm very interested in that old galaxy of yours. And he says, well, I think I'll sell it to you because I want somebody to have it that's going to not only take care of it, but bring it back to the way it should be brought back. He, he loved the racing part of that car. And I was, I was in, I was like, yes, sir. I'm, I'm all about it. I said, what is the, uh, what is the price you have to have for it? And he gave me a price on it. And at that time, the number he put on it, uh, I was, I don't know. I can, I think I can find one cheaper than that. I, I just, I just, I love the history in the car, and that's what had me just gripped on that car. But I was like, price is a little steep for me. Because, uh, again, I'm still kind of broke. Um, so we talk a little bit. We get off the phone. Uh, we come home, and I wouldn't have that car without my wife. My wife is the only reason I own that car. Uh, she went out and procured a loan uh, for the amount of the car and told me about it after she'd done it. So now it's done. So I called Melvin, got your money. I'm coming to get the car. Whoa, 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 whoa. how much money? You know, uh, I was like, well, the number you, you agreed to on, or the number you told me on the phone. And there was this pause. You could tell he kind of automatically had this seller's remorse kind of thing. There was this pause, and uh, he said, well, you know, I could get, uh, I got a buddy of mine that said he'd give me, it ended up being about $500 more, uh, but I'd have to bring it to Florida where he lives at. 
And I said, well, I, I, I can't give you any more than, than what we talked about. I, I, I had to borrow the money to do that. So we talked for about 15, 20 minutes, and he said, all right, if you're willing to pay that much, if you're willing to pay that number, uh, I'll sell it to you. I'll be there in a minute. Well, you know, take your time. He didn't understand. The trailer was already hooked to the truck. I, I already had the money in an envelope. The trailer was hooked to the truck. I was already ready to go. So when he agreed to it, it was it was over then. I was on my way to get it. And uh, went over there, uh, loaded the truck up. Uh, you could almost see a tear in old Melvin's eyes as that car left his, his garage. He wasn't really ready to to part with that car but he did and i'm ever thankful that he did uh and i immediately took it home put it in the shop and uh i was renting a little shop at that time doing some work customer work outside work uh had a little shop of my own and uh Took it to the shop, put it in the shop, and immediately started tinkering with it. And uh, I took, I had taken the carburetor off and went through the carburetor and rebuilt it. The old Holly three barrel, some people have never heard of that, but took the old Holly three barrel off, went through it, rebuilt it, cleaned it up, bolted it back on. I put a new coil on it and a new set of plug wires, just generic auto parts plug wires and uh a set of points in it still still you know it was it was just like melvin had bought it in 63 i put a new set of points in it a new coil on it set of plug wires plugs and rebuilt the carburetor and cleaned the fuel system out and fired it up for the first time guys, wanted to give you all a quick look at the car um this is my southeast gasser super stock car uh I will be having this car at Mooresville for the Southeast Gasser Superstock race. It is September the, it's either the 28th or 29th. I'll have to double check on that. Right now we're doing, you can see the uh, axle is out in rear. Uh, right now I'm doing a gear swap in the back end. Uh, got a couple of little things to do. I got to get the gas tank out from under it, clean it out, new fuel lines, new brake lines, uh, and make it, you know safe of course but uh, it doesn't like a whole lot to be at least able to go on a trailer and go to the track Joked, uh, joked about it when I showed up to the first race and said the car was so period correct it still had the uh, period correct oil in it. Uh, you know, this car still had cobwebs on the on the block and stuff that I didn't even clean off when we went to the first race. And the story behind that is I got a call from Mike White, um, uh, somebody that I came to be very good friends with. I got a call from him. And he said, can you have your car ready to go by Mooresville? I, I don't know, dude. I, I've never even had it started yet. He said, listen, we're trying to make this thing work. We're trying to build a class out of this. And we want to have like two cars uh, that's coming so far. So we need cars. I said, well, if I can get it running, it's not going to be very much a race car. He said, does not matter. We need car counts to get this thing started. Um, so we can get, so we can get more people there. I was like, okay, sure. I'll have it ready. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, we, uh, we worked very hard to get to this point. So after I got the car running for the first time, fired up, it didn't sound too bad. 
Um, I had never moved the car under its own power. I was kind of going, I guess the clutch and all kind of works in it. So I had put it in gear, backed it out of the garage, put it in first gear, pulled it forward. I had reverse and first. That's all I knew. So I uh, done what any uh, reliable, um, what any guy that cares about stuff, what any guy that, that wants to make sure everything's dialed in correctly and all would do. And I loaded it on the trailer and we went to Mooresville. Keep in mind, I didn't even have slicks. I had the tires that sat on that car. The date code on them was like 1988. Uh, the, the tires that were on that car were the old uh, original. I think they were the the black and chrome uh, ET mags or whatever that, that Melvin had had on it. That's what was on that car. Now, Mike had told me if I come, he would loan me a pair of slicks to go on the back of it. And uh, we put Mike's slicks on the back of it. Them two old 1988 model tires still on the front of it. And I pulled into the staging lanes. Now, uh, a guy that was there sent me a video of the very first time that car had pulled into staging lanes since the 70s uh, and uh, late 70s, early 80s. A guy sent me a video of it, and some reason when he sent me the video, the sound didn't come through, but here it is, the very first pass the Galaxy ever made under my ownership. And hence, there's the start of the Mooresville curse for me because that was the very first time I'd ever been to Mooresville, very first time I'd ever been down the track in that car, and the very first pass that car had made under my ownership, and the shifter broke. First gear was fine. Uh, I think it was first and second was fine. And when I went to third, or maybe it was first was fine when I went to second. I can't remember. But when I went to shift, it was just the shifter just kind of done one of these numbers. It was just flopping around. It was the shifter. It was flopping around. I could see it because the old shifter boot was tore and kind of laid over. And I could look down there and see it. Lay it on the seat beside me. Why it was there, I don't know. I can't remember. I'd been working on something. It was one of those old big, long, flathead screwdrivers. It was like two foot long or something. I reached and grabbed it and rammed it down in uh, the gate on the shifter down in there and snatched it back uh, so that it would make the, the next shift. I was absolutely mortified by how that car ran. Uh, it, it was so, so bad. Uh, but I got to experience that car just the way it came from the factory, and it was so bad the way it ran. The It had set for so long, pressure on the valve springs, that they were, it was almost like you was hitting a rev limiter at about 4,000 RPMs. It just would not RPM at all. Uh you couldn't hardly shift the car. Uh, <laughs> it was so, so terrible. But it ran good. I mean, it didn't spit and sputter. It didn't do any of that. It ran smooth as a button. I got around, pulled in the pits, up there, ran my little screwdriver down in there, got it in reverse, backed it right back up there to the trailer, and I'm ready to go home. I am embarrassed. I don't want no part of this. And... I'll never forget it. The only reason that car uh, ever returned to the Southeast Gassers was because of a man named Tom White. Uh, I was going home. I was done. I was never going to show my face at the Southeast Gassers race again. I, I could not believe how terrible this thing went down the track. I'm thinking, I bought a legit race car so that there would be nothing to do. Not really thinking that the last time it had been on a racetrack was, you know, 25, 30 years. Yeah, like 30 years prior or better. And uh, <laughs> it just, uh, it was not what I was expecting. But I backed in the pits and I'm looking over here because I'm fighting with a shifter. And I can feel somebody breathing on me. 
And I turn around, and it's old Tom White. And if you don't know Tom, he, he kind of looks like one of them uh, mountain men from Moonshiners, or, or not Moonshiner, but from the show Mountain Men, you know, anyway. And uh, <laughs> he uh, he's, he's over, he's like, man, we're so happy you're here, you know. So he said, I'm so happy you're here. You've done a great job. Car, car did great, you know. If you need anything, I'm pitted straight. We're pitted straight across from you. He was a crew chief. We're pitted straight across from you. You come over. We got any tool you need. We got jacks, jack stands. Uh, you need help working on it? Just call me. I'll come over here and I'll help you work on it. And I, I backed in there with this ashamed feeling that people were just going to laugh me out of there. And here's Tom being so nice and so generous to me that. Um, I felt like it was okay that everything didn't go okay. You know what I mean? And that started the long journey of turning that 63 and a half galaxy into legacy. So at that point, the work began. Um, we pulled that 390 out and again, did not have a lot of money. Um, I uh, cleaned up the tops of the fenders and just dusted them with a little off-white paint. It kind of matched the car. Uh, cleaned the car up real good. Cleaned the interior up real decently as much as it would. Pulled that 390 out. And, uh, uh, again, money was money was tight. Um, circle back around to my buddy Mike White. Uh, he said, man, I've got a set of 30 over 390 pistons here on the shelf. Uh, they're already on rods with ARP bolts. He said, uh, I will bring them to you. We had a banquet we done every year in January. He said, I'll bring them to you at the banquet. He said, you bring me another old set of rods. So I got a set of rods to go back. He said, and we'll just trade out. I was like, All right, done. Um, and then, uh, uh, Daniel Powell ground me a, a cam hydraulic flat tapping cam, nothing special. And I sat down and I ported on and cleaned up that set of factory C3 heads. Uh, I bet I spent a week working on those heads, uh, just porting and polishing on them. And we cut the heads, put a bigger valve in them, just doing what we could to make those heads as good as we could. And then the only new part I bought was I bought a Performer RPM intake. Uh, I then put a, a Pentron, Pentron, uh box to replace the points in that car, and that's what it was. It was a fresh 30 over 390 with a decent little flat tappet cam in it. Uh, the ignition had been upgraded, and it had a uh, RPM intake on it. Uh, and put the car back together. Still had the... Uh, at that time, still had a stock transmission in it. Made a few passes. The car, the car was beyond faster than what it was. Uh, that first pass you seen. Now, keep in mind, these are eighth mile times. I think that first pass it went something like a twelve. I mean, when I say it was terrible, it was terrible. So we put that uh, three ninety in it. It was warmed up. And didn't change anything else on the car. Same transmission, same everything. Uh, but I did take the shifter apart, and there was a loose bolt in there, and I, I kind of redone the shifter, put it back together, and the car was way faster. The car the car ran like a a nine a nine twenty or something. So to go from twelves to nine twenties with nothing but just a a little small amount of engine work it was it was amazing the difference it made but again you couldn't shift the car uh very easily it was it was kind of hard to shift at rpm uh, it, when you watch it leave, it bounced like a basketball. It was pretty bad. The next thing I done was put a high tire transmission in it because why fix any of the suspension? Just add more, you know, more stuff to it. So I put the high tire transmission in it and had a drive shaft cut for it. 
and the car because we could shift the car the car started running like eight eight fifties uh it was very good uh and then we eventually uh put a set of springs on it. I think that was the only thing we changed on the suspension at that time put a set of springs on it, and I had moved the shocks so they would sit in front of the axle it was behind the axle uh couple of small little details and we eventually got that car now keep in mind at that time that car weighed 3900 pounds with me in it it was still a stock car with just a warmed up 390 a 30 over 390 flat tappet cam i was turning it to 60 i think about 6500 rpms at that time and uh we made a pass. I think the fastest pass that next season was uh, in Alabama, and we ran a seven. I think I have to look at time slip. I think it was a seven sixty three. Uh, we ran a seven sixty three in essentially a four thousand pound four speed car, uh, street car with a warmed over three ninety in it, and. That was really the start of getting out of hand with that car. Uh, that car ran so well. it was You could drive it on the street. It was so streetable. It ran so good. It, it, was a, it was just a cream puff. It was a sweetheart of a car. I know compared to a lot of things, a 763 doesn't sound like a, a fast pass at all. It, and it, it's not really crazy fast. But uh again it was pretty much a a stockish 1963 and a half ford galaxy uh 30 over flat tappet cam and a ported set of heads and a dual plane intake a good gearbox and it ran really well it, it worked it it done what it was supposed to do and i should have left the car alone but that kind of fueled the bug to let's go further and let's go further and let's go further and let's go further. And, go further. Uh, and you fast forward to where it is now. I haven't even, I haven't ran this new motor so I don't know how much it's, how it's going to run. But early on, I wanted to prove a point. I wanted to prove a point that you could take a stock, all forward uh, FE motor and it could go fast. Because that motor literally had the forward, Everything on that motor was not only forward, it had casting numbers on it correct for the car. It had the, it had the correct crank uh, from forward. It had the correct rods. It, had, it did have aftermarket pistons in it. No real choice there. It had an aftermarket cam in it, uh, and it had aftermarket intake. But it had the, the iron forward heads. They were the C3AE heads that came on the car. Uh, it had the factory water pump. I mean... It was all Ford where it could be. I couldn't afford one of those nice um, Ford intakes that, that came back into the day. I couldn't afford them, so the Elderbrock intake was all I, all I had. But it, had, it still had the factory distributor. It just had a Pentronics ignition in it. So I wanted to prove that I could go fast with all Ford parts. You fast forward to what's in the car now, it has a production block. That is it. That's all it's forward in under that thing. It's a it's a production 428 block that's in the car now. But all the internals, uh, the bottom ends all scat. Uh, it's got DSS pistons, forged pistons. Uh, it's got trick flow heads, trick flow intake. Uh, two VRS 750 carburetors on it. Uh, MSD ignition. Uh, Elderbrock water pump, one of those aluminum water pumps. Uh, even the oil pan, it's a, it's a Moroso. Uh, I think it's a Moroso. Yeah, it's a Moroso uh, pan on it. it. It's just, and then of course we're running the Ram Red Hat clutch behind it, the high tire transmission. The Ford 9 inch now has aftermarket axles, aftermarket center chunk. Uh, it's just the housing of a 9 inch uh, or a Ford uh housing it's got aftermarket springs under the back aftermarket springs and shocks under the front shocks too in the back um it's it's leaps and bounds 
where it was. And now the car is like 3,700 with me in it versus almost 3,900 with me in it. Uh, it's, it's leaps and bounds where it was. It's almost really gone further than it should and gone overboard. I got to chasing that dragon. You know, you, you start chasing the dragon. You start, you know, we got to go faster. 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 And I wish I hadn't have done that. I wish I'd have left that car. I wish I could go back in time to when that car had that little 390 in it, the little simple transmission in it, and said, you know what? This car is perfect. Quit monkeying with it. And if we want to go faster, let's do it with a different car. Uh, Because I feel like I've gone so far this way with that car now. Uh, And I find myself wanting to pull back some now. Uh, And I've started doing a lot of wiring and stuff on that car now, getting all the lights working and everything. I think we're going to turn that car into a drag and drive car and actually pull that car back this way a little bit and quit trying to chase, you know, low five second passes in that car. And let's just pull back a little bit and let's just make it streetable, make it fun to drive on the street and it runs whatever it runs and we'll do drag and drives with it in stick shift classes. Um, I don't know. I just want to enjoy it more. And when it comes to the name, I know I, I said I was going to mention, I, I have to make a big circle. When it comes to the name, uh, we struggled. We, we thought, cause all these old cars back in the sixties had names on them. Um, and we, we went out and back a long time on some different names I've got some family that still hold NHRA records to this day back when they had the factory modified production class uh, and they ran uh, Chevrolets, uh, actually Camaros uh, later and earlier it was like the the 52 Chevys and stuff but later they ran 67 Camaros and the name of their car was Suddenly and then the other one was Suddenly 2 and I even thought about naming that car early on Suddenly 3 uh, just to pay homage to to my history, but it didn't seem like it worked because those were all Chevys and this is a Ford and not that I'm not that that really matters. It just it just didn't seem like it worked and uh, I didn't want to. I didn't until recently start talking about that whole part of the family anyway because I didn't want I didn't want it to seem like I was trying to to build my name off somebody else. So I kind of shied away from that and we went through several names and then it was kind of weird. We, we ended up, uh, having a conversation and we were talking about something and we were talking about that car carrying on Melvin's legacy. Uh, and it just worked when we said it. And then putting the name on the car, uh, I put the name on the car and it worked and it was kind of like it was named after the Melvin. And then we got the opportunity, that car's been in a movie, actually a horror movie. (laughs) Uh, You can look it up. I think it was called uh, Hell Road. I think it was the name of it. Um, Just when I say low budget, I mean, uh, you know, the kind where we go down to the dollar store and get a pack of crackers to feed the cast kind of horror movie. It was, it wasn't a B, it wasn't a B movie. It was like a D movie. You know what I mean? So, uh, just, a, just a little old movie. And, uh, when we were talking to somebody there, they, they mentioned a name and, and off the cusp and it's actually on IMDB now. And I'm credited for the guy that came up with a line and maybe I am, but, uh, it's tied to me now. I came up with the, uh, uh, the saying, when somebody asked me about the name, I said, well, in my opinion, a legacy is something you live, not something you leave behind. <clears throat> and so the name kind of tied to it. Now, of course, that car, that car has been in DeVille magazine. That car has had a great run. Melvin constantly came by and seen his old car and would hear it run. And he'd tell me stories about the track and all. Sadly, we lost Melvin back in uh, September of this year. I was actually in Missouri at a race at the no name nationals. When, when I got the call that we lost Melvin. Um, so that car has a lot of history and a lot of meaning to me. And I hope, uh, 
uh, a lot more of you understand now why that car and how that car is tied to us. And also a little bit of why I haven't really had it on the channel lately because uh, I was going in a direction with that car to where we were going to chase low five second passes. We were going to chase low fives, maybe even high fours with an FE motor. I don't know if it's been done. It may have been done a bunch. I just don't know of it. So we were going to chase some serious uh, passes with that FE motor uh, to the point where we were even putting uh, dual nitrous plates on it, running a big shot of nitrous on it. We was going to change the tire size on it a little bit. And we were really going to hammer home. This thing was going to be the fastest galaxy on the planet. Um, and it takes time to save money and buy those kind of parts. After we lost Melvin, I lost direction on the car. I, I don't really want to go that way with the car anymore. I don't really want to go to where I'm trying to, you know, have a parachute on the back of it and, and, make these crazy passes i want to pull back and i want to bring it back to what melvin envisioned when he ordered the car originally melvin wanted something that he could drive during the week uh, around on base at that point uh but he wanted something he could drive during the week and race on the weekend i want to go back to that idea with that car i want to go back to I can get in this car and drive it to the store if I want to, but it's still pretty dead gum fast on the racetrack. So if that means going back to it being a six second car and not trying to be, you know, or high sixes, low sevens, I, whatever. I want it to be a fun car we can enjoy. And I think going in the direction of making it a drag and drive car is the best way to honor Melvin's memory. That way we're driving it on the road. We'll go to the track, make passes in the car. And it gets to do both, just like it did when Melvin owned it. And um, I think the car will be more enjoyable. Because right now, that car sits for months at a time and doesn't get touched. When it comes time to go racing, it's a mad thrash right before the first race. We carry it out of the track, and we make passes in it. I don't want it to be like that anymore. I want it to be like, hey, you want to go take the car and cruise town Saturday night? You know, kind of thing. Uh, or Let's drive it up to Shady Side and make some passes and drive it back home, uh, you know, or or wear shoals or whatever, you know. That's that's where I want to go with that car. So that's the long winded story of how I ended up with it, kind of the story behind it, and kind of what I've got in mind for it. Um, I hope people have stayed with me through this whole thing. And kind of understand now um, where we are, where we're going, and all with that car. And uh, give me a little grace. The car will be back in here uh, a lot more in upcoming videos. Uh, we got some other stuff we got to take care of, but that car will be back in here. Um, that's about all I've got for this one. Uh, guys, uh, thank you so much for watching. Please share these videos. Uh, over the last couple of weeks, for some reason, our views have been down a little bit. But uh, this is how we pay for doing things like what we're going to do to the galaxy. So please share these videos. Thumbs up, subscribe, like, drop a comment. Let me know what you think of, of our ideas and our directions and, or whatever. Just drop a comment. Uh, the comments really drive these videos. So drop a comment, subscribe, share, all those things. They're really important to us. Uh, they, they do so much for us. I will also drop a link in the description. Uh, we do have some merch out there. There is some Galaxy merchandise. There is some merchandise with a wagon on it that uh, is holiday merchandise. Uh, we even have some stuff out there with, uh, with I, I believe, my buddy's T-Bird on it. Uh, it, there's there's some good merch there. There's some good shirts, sweaters, hoodies. There's coffee cups, uh, the little stainless drinking cups. 
there's there's several things there. I'm sure there's something for everybody. There's even stickers and stuff. So I'll drop a link in the uh, description for that. I will also drop a link in the description for Greasy's Garage. You've seen his stuff on my videos in the past. The soaps that he makes, uh, they will they will absolutely clean you up to where I mean I've been over building a set of heads, wiped my hands off with some of his uh, grip wipes. These uh these grip wipes, you can tell I use them. They're covered in grease and everything. I'm telling you, these things right here absolutely get the job done. I mean. Proof is right there. Uh, you see the outside of the bottle compared to my hand. These things work. Uh, he's got the regular soaps. Um, he's got some stuff for your busted knuckles and things. There's some great products over there. So I'll drop a link in there in the description for that as well. Use code Bobby10. Get a, get a little discount on the stuff. Everybody likes a discount, right? Listen, you're going to spend the money anyway. So why spend it with a big box store when you can spend it with a local company? Uh, I guarantee you it's made in America because it's made right here in South Carolina. Um, I will also, I'll put my email in. I'll put my mailing address in. Uh, Y'all ever want to contact me for anything. Uh, God bless you guys. Thank you so much for watching, subscribing, sharing, and commenting. Uh, may the Lord bless you today more than did yesterday. Him be all the glory. Guys, we will see you on the next one. And it's going to be a pretty good one. Hey, Bobby. It's Melvin. Uh, the reason I'm calling, uh, might have some bad news. If I can't get my picture taken beside that thing, it's going to make me mad. <laughs> hey, that thing's beautiful. <laughs> but I... Uh, I would love to get my picture taken beside that thing. I would appreciate it. you call me and let me know when I, when I can be there. <laughs>